Adventures in Research. This is Paul Shannon introducing another in the series of programs dealing with the thrilling adventures to be found in the field of scientific research, as told by the men of science themselves. Today's story by Dr. Phillips Thomas, research engineer of the Westinghouse Research Laboratories, is an anniversary tribute to a man who contributed much to the power and the glory of America, George Westinghouse. It's 1866. Another war has come to an end. A horrible conflict, not between nation and nation, but between brothers of the same nation. The Civil War is over, and on the ashes left by the dying fire of hate, America must build a new and better future. As the songs of battle fade into the past, a new song is born. A song of whirring wheels, of machines. A new era of industry is dawning, and a new way of travel to replace the covered wagons. From California. How far? Mm, well, now, that all depends on how you look at it. What do you mean? Well, if you mean how far in hope, I'd say we were practically there already. But if you mean in miles, it's pretty far off. Get up there! Pa, oh, do you think there ever will be any way to go to California outside of on a wagon? Uh, I don't know. Those fool steam locomotives might be some good. But I'll take the wagon any time instead of riding one of them railroad trains. Why, Pa? Well, for one thing, they don't travel out this far. And besides, they ain't safe. It's easy to stop horses in a wagon, but a heavy train of five, six cars is something else. Now, there's been too many wrecks on the railroad. But I tell you, sir, this break of mine will stop a train. I'll prove it to you if you let me. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, Mr. Westinghouse. No railroad will let you have equipment to prove something that is only a fanciful dream. <laughs> Imagine stopping a train with wind. <laughs> but I tell you, this is what the railroads need. A brake that will give the engineer control of the train. Instead of relying on the braking crew to stop it, there is no doubt about it. If such a break could be made and perfected, it would give the railroads what they need, a real chance to grow. Yes, there's no doubt about it. Let's try. And so the new break gets its chance and proves itself. George Westinghouse's air break is destined to shape a new era for America. But even as the first air breaks are being made and improvements added in the Westinghouse plant at Pittsburgh, a gold spike is being driven to join the rails of the Pacific Road, the first transcontinental railroad line at Promontory Point, Utah. That's the last spike, boys! What's the train fare from here to Kansas City? By boat. Oh, no, I'm going to go by train. Throughout America, the fields are rolling. The trains are getting longer, carrying more passengers, helping America to grow, to build newer cities beyond the thriving young city of Chicago, out to the great far west. They're getting longer, they're rolling faster, and they'll stop where the engineer wants them to, when he has to stop. She's really eyeballing now, Tom. Yeah, with 23 cars rolling right along, too. You know, when I first started engineer, I never thought I'd be carrying a load like this. Or going as fast, either. Or being sure I could stop. The man who invented this air brake was powerful smart. Powerful smart. And while new cities grow to the west... Dwellers in New York and Boston and Hartford and Columbus are finding new contributions of the iron monster of the rails with its newfound brakes of air. Good morning, Mrs. Grant. Oh, good morning. I was looking at this. What is it? A, a new kind of vegetable? Oh, that's oranges from out in California. You ought to try some. They're delicious, juicy as can be. You mean they grow these out in California? Yes, ma'am. And they ship them here in these new refrigerated railroad cars. Keep things wonderful, they do. 
Yes, the rails are humming. America is growing. And industries, new industries, are growing with it. Biggest year the meat factories have had yet. Those railroads sure can haul the freight. How could we do without them? We'll have to expand our plant. Next year, the railroads figure to need more steel rails than ever in history. It'll mean a big thing to us if we can supply them. The market's up in textiles and shoes. Higher in wheat and other grain, too. I saw half a trainload of reapers going out to Kansas only this morning. America is moving on rails, building on rails, thriving as she grows. And again, the mind that conceived the air brake, searching for new needs, sees in railroading the urgent demand for a system of safe signaling to control the ever-increasing traffic. They have something like it in England, but here's the logical answer. An interlocking signal and switching mechanism powered by compressed air. Another creation of Westinghouse genius to speed the trains on their way, safely on the open road, safely in the tangled terminal yards. Switches and signals that men need not set by hand. Perfect powered control of America's main arteries of transportation. Yes, it's a wonderful America now, with its trains and telephones, its bicycles with the big front wheels. It's a new age we're living in, a plush and gilded age, with new speed and lighter labors. Lighter nights, too, with electric lights. But there's considerable speculation about using electricity for power. Steam. Steam is your only source of power. Electricity ought to be put to use. Well, it's fine for lighting a few of those lamps, but it isn't practical. That's right. You can generate enough for the lights, but you can't carry the power very far from the generator. If I had more power, I could dot twice as much steel. Give me more power and I'll make enough shoes for everyone in the New England states. Give me power. 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 In Pittsburgh, George Westinghouse turns his agile mind to the solution of the problem of power. Sinks a gas well in his own backyard. Takes out 28 patents on gas control and distribution devices to furnish an inexpensive fuel for power to replace coal. But manufacturers all over the eastern states are crying for still more power. More lights are burning by electricity. More motors running. But electricity for power just won't travel over any distance. Yes, it will. There's a way. Instead of generating current that goes in only one direction, make it go back and forth through the wire. You can carry it on for miles that way. Who says so? (laughs) That's a laugh. (laughs) That's alternating current. The voltage is too high. Kill you like that. Uh, No one wants that stuff. I need power. Try AC. Another new melody in America's song of progress. The humming of an alternating current generator. George Westinghouse moves ahead in the face of all the disagreement. The first AC system is installed to light the main street of Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Carnation, Hetty, the town's gone plumb wild over that display of electric light last night. I know, but isn't it wonderful? Yeah, in a way it is. <laughs> old Doc Jackson was driving right down Main Street when they started the generator going out at the old mill. Scared his horse so, them lights coming on like that. He bolted, and old Doc couldn't get a stop for half a mile. They say it's very dangerous, electricity. Well, I heard the Westinghouse men say it ain't so. The mother fellow from up at Massachusetts Tech says different. A man don't know what to think to hear someone pro and con. Pro and con. Yes, indeed. While the argument raged, George Westinghouse and the men who worked with him carried out their research in the field of alternating current. With Nikola Tesla, he developed the polyphase AC motor. And the newspaper shouted, Paper, electric lineman killed at work. Read about the corpse and the wires. Paper, one more lineman roasted to death. Get your here. Obviously, we must return to the use of gas. Electricity is far too dangerous. I insist. The only practical source of power for factories and for illumination is alternating current. Your attention, ladies and gentlemen. Step up and buy your tickets now. See the most marvelous, the most wonderful dance and sensation of the age. Little Egypt. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Ride the Ferris wheel. The only vertical ride in existence. See the entire world's fair in a glance as you fly to the sky like a bird. How many? It's 400 years since Columbus landed in America. And here is America commemorating the achievements of all those years in the magic splendor of the Columbian Exposition. Here is all the world on display. 
And the glory of it is crowned by another step to a greater future. The entire fair is bathed in the light of thousands of electric lamps installed by George Westinghouse and powered by the Westinghouse alternating current generators specially built and on display in the fair's marvelous machinery hall. Mama, what are those big machines? They're electricity machines, honey. Now stay back here with Mother and don't be climbing all over that iron railing. What's electricity, Mama? It's what lights all these electric lights at the fair. Does electricity come out of the machines? Yes, dear. I don't see it. Of course you don't. It runs along the wires. It does? Yes, dear. But you said you can't see the electricity. Well, you can't see it. Well, then how do you know it runs along the wires? Oh, for goodness sake, must you ask so many questions? Come along, the people are looking at you and laughing. But I want to see the electricity, Mommy. You said it runs, and if oh, it runs, well, I want to see the For hundreds of years, Niagara, giant among waterfalls, has poured billions of tons of valuable water over its foaming crest, dashed it against the rocks below, where it rushed on down the river to the sea. Niagara, a wonderful place for a honeymoon, the favorite spot of couples newly married. Now, men of vision cast a far-seeing eye upon it and see in Niagara's rushing water a source of energy, energy to manufacture electricity. A wonderful source of power. If we could harness our source, make it generate electricity. You have no use for all the electricity that you generate. Oh, not at Niagara, perhaps, but... Well, there's Buffalo, and there's all upstate New York. Oh, yes. Try and get it from Niagara Falls to those places. The use of alternating current, proven practical at the World's Fair, is certainly the answer to the problem of carrying power. Can you make it work at Niagara? Can you make it work? Can you? The answer comes... Three seconds after midnight on November 16th, 1896, when, generators installed and tested, the circuits are closed, and Niagara lights the city of Buffalo 20 miles away. Niagara, it worked, thanks to the genius of George Westinghouse. There's power at Niagara Falls. Power at Buffalo. Bring the plant to upstate New York. Carborundum, aluminum, electrochemical plants, new industries for America, new jobs for Americans. New useful products for the markets of America and the world. The contributions to transportation and power continue. George Westinghouse takes out hundreds of patents and doesn't stop even then. Subway trains. Elevated trains. Electrified railroads. The new steam turbine for steamships. Elevator systems for the rising forest of skyscrapers. Speed, safety, power. That is the power, and this the glory. If someday they say of me that in my work, I have contributed something to the welfare and happiness of my fellow men. I shall be satisfied. And this is the glory, the only glory George Westinghouse ever asked. And that's today's anniversary story by Dr. Phillips Thomas, research engineer of the Westinghouse Research Laboratories. again next week for another story by Dr. Thomas on Adventures in Research. <laughs> <laughs>